Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. The first thing I have to say in this video is I need to give you guys a humongous thank you for all of the kind and sweet, supportive comments, emails, direct messages. When I shared the living room transformation reveal this last Sunday, if you have not seen it, it was my last video that I shared on the channel and it was such a great one. This living room was, you know, the main reason that I purchased the home or it was like the first thing that I saw that really made me wanna buy this house. And after wrapping up the living room, I was gonna go downstairs and start working on the other living room which I have an idea I want to tell you guys about that at a later time but I figured you know what why not pop into the breakfast nook and finish up the space because I actually have a lot of the pieces already whereas I'm still gathering some items for downstairs so we are going to be working in the breakfast nook this week and I thought I'd share with you guys kind of the current status of it and what's in there so you can get an idea of where we're starting at and what's already been done so in the kitchen we are going to work our way into the breakfast nook and I love the arch here because I I love the depth of it. I think it adds so much architectural interest. And in the breakfast nook, as you guys know, this is where we started the tile work. So I already went ahead and pulled out all the tile in here. We redid the tile, which was so much fun. And this table is the star of our breakfast nook. So this is actually three different pieces I put together. The top is a Zalige top from Morocco. And I love the burgundy with this tone. I thought it just paired nicely with the floor. And I love, love, love red at this moment. And then I added a fluted terracotta pot that just has this kind of antique distressed quality to it and then on the bottom is a millstone rock and the reason I added the rock to the bottom was just to increase the height so that way it is a perfect kind of breakfast nook table height and this is what we are working with so far and the first thing we're gonna be doing is painting the walls so if you recall I swatched this color here now this is called string by Pharaoh and Ball but there's something that I love about this color with this kind of like darker burgundy. And I also feel like you see a lot of this tone in kind of the lighter tile as well. And I also feel like it's gonna pair nicely with the tile that's on the floor. So this is the color. I've had this box sitting in here for like a month now and I like it a lot. So I think I'm gonna go this route. I actually ended up getting the color tinted into a Valspar one because a lot cheaper than a Pharaoh and Ball one. And on the ceiling, I'm gonna be doing a different color. I'm actually doing Pharaoh and Ball's Eating Room Red. It's gonna be pairing with the color String. And I'm doing this on the ceiling because as you can see, the ceiling has this kind of fun step up detail to it. I don't know the exact terminology of this, but it kind of has these just little interesting moments. And I thought it'd be cool to highlight that. We also have kind of this angled coved corner, which I love. So I feel like the ceiling, because it has this molding piece, can kind of be set apart. And we're gonna be painting that red and the walls and all the window string. And if I show First coat of red on the ceiling. As you can see, it's looking a little patchy at the moment, but that is not a problem. The second coat should fix that. And all the windows are taped off because we need to do a primer coat. I'm gonna be using the Bin Shellac Base Primer, and this is perfect to go over top of really any surface, a slick surface that you wanna make a bit more kind of gritty for your paint to stick to. So I'm gonna prime all of the window trim in this, and then we could do our wall color.
So when you have a room that's kind of connected up to other rooms, you know, your dining room, your kitchen, you have to make sure the color goes with everything. And I'm just gonna say right now, I'm not loving this color with the kitchen through here. I thought it was gonna kind of like pull correctly and like warm, but it just seems out of place. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Like the tone is just, it's not my favorite. And I did get another color that I'm actually trying for the downstairs living room. It's this one right here. Um, I'm gonna go up a little closer so you guys can see it. So that's the color there. And that is Farrow and Ball's shade in Dimity. And I think it's really, really pretty. If I pull it out, you can see that this right here is our string color. And then this and this is Dimity. So string on kind of the walls and the trim. And then Dimity's here, which is kind of a lighter version. It has a pinkish tone to it. So I might switch to Dimity. I'm not sure. I'm gonna let it sit for a bit but you guys always know I change my mind often so just happens it just happens so this is kind of what we're looking at see this is this is kind of how it's looking going into there which it's just not so the room is painted the ceiling's red the walls have a color on them, I changed it. Um, I'm letting the red set for a little bit. I have this idea of hanging either placemats or napkins or potentially even table runners as cafe curtains in my space. So I'm heading to Crate and Barrel really quickly. I wanna see if Crate and Barrel or Pottery Barn has any napkins or placemats I could actually hang as little curtains because I need really small panels and I thought that would eliminate me having to custom make them. So I'm gonna see what they have. All right, so I found table runners and placemats. Here are some nice like little linen-y options. Kind of forgot to film when I was in there, but I ended up stopping by Pottery Barn because Crate and Barrel literally had like one option and I actually found two potential great options from Pottery Barn. So I found this one, which I think is gonna be our winner. It's like a linen, but it's kind of a little bit more on the warmer side of a linen. And then I also got this Buffalo check one, which could be a fun option. It's kind of bold, so I'm thinking it's probably not gonna work, but I figured I'd try out both and then I could return the one that I don't want. So let's go try these on the windows. Eight. I also need eight panels and they were sold in sets of four so it was only like $60 for eight total napkins but I don't think it's that bad uh, especially if they fit and they look nice. So the color has changed in the breakfast nook. Not too much though. This is actually a shade that I was testing for the downstairs. And when I tested it downstairs, I was like, I want to use this in the breakfast nook. As you saw, I started painting red on the ceiling. The red was great until it just really bounced a pink tone in here. And as you can see, it's even kind of pinkish right now. And that's because the sun's reflecting off the paper on the ground. Still need to go through and just do one more coat on the ceiling. This is two coats here, but just need one more coat all around the edges to get this nice and covered up. The red was fun for a second, but it just wasn't working for me within here. And I don't know, just wasn't my favorite. So what I would really love to do in here is actually get the curtain rod or our little kind of cafe rod. I did not know that Lowe's actually sells these kinds of rods. This was $7, a little rod, and this one is gonna span the entire window, which is so nice. We're gonna do a bracket on either side and then also in the center points right here and right here. Put one of these napkins on the, I mark them on this side and then I transfer the measurement over to that side and then screw in either ends of the brackets. I love it. There is still some paint splatter on the window that we're gonna get off tomorrow, but the rod is so, so good. It's not bad. That's cute. This is kind of a hard detail to see, but as you can see, these rings are just as they came and they kind of have this like greenish dark tint to them. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of gold leaf rub and buff right over top, uh, just slightly to add a slight more of like yellowy gold to it, which I feel like matches the bar a lot better.
And also don't forget to dab a little on your screws. That way it looks completely custom and like you ordered everything out of brass and it's perfect. out the dryer and they're nice and like pressed they look so nice and i am going to hang these on our hooks which are added here's like a little look at what that looks like on the window and then if you were to pull it you kind of get a little bit of coverage on partial of the window but then you'd kind of just have it pulled over to the edge as a bit of detail ended up starting the baseboards, or Justin actually did the baseboards. I went back to my parents' house for a couple days, and Justin came over here and installed the baseboards. We do have to paint them the right color as a wall because we got the color color matched and it looked like that. Um, so not sure what happened there, but really beautiful so far. I love the color in here. This is Faro and Ball's shade Dimity. And we have the table. So you're probably wondering what chairs we are using. And I've had a couple of wooden chairs in here that I've just been using to sit at this table for the past couple of weeks. But I'm actually planning on using those chairs downstairs. And I found some incredible chairs while I was back home on Facebook Marketplace. And I have to show these to you guys. <gasps> look at that! You guys, look at these chairs. They are crazy. I got eight of these. For $300, eight chairs, $300. They are solid like metal and they're so large, so comfortable. They actually have like a little bit of a flex to them and they have these super unique like details, these like ball details on the top. They're insane. Justin and I even tried to Google lens them to see if we could find anything similar and could not find anything similar. So they definitely could be one of a kind. Of course this table is not gonna fit eight, but what it will fit is five because I've always wanted five chairs at this table. It's just a round table where four looks too spaced. We definitely need five. So I'm gonna bring in five of these chairs and see how they look. I have not seen them yet. We just brought them up because there's not gonna be any furniture in this room other than this table. I, mean, I don't have space for it. Even like, even if I had a smaller table, I couldn't even put like a small piece of furniture here. It just doesn't work. There's a vent on the ground, windows on the rest of the walls. See like this. This is the vibe. This is giving dining al fresco. This is giving Italian um, Spanish villa. It's giving everything it needed to give. But you want to know what's not giving is the uh, fabric on the chairs. That's not giving at all. It's actually this not great like jacquard fabric. And I want to change this. So I got some fabric for these chairs on the way back. Uh, pick some up and let me share it with you guys. I like this almost navy tealish color with this like amber color and then an ivory. I just really feel like this is going to elevate them so, so much and make the metal base just feel so much more expensive. Like look at the feet. I forgot to mention the feet detail on the chairs. It's my favorite part. How good are those? And they even have little rubber stoppers on the bottom. Whoever made these did an excellent job. The side, the curve. I just love that. Upholstery's ever intimidated you, a chair is super simple, especially if the base comes off just like this or the seat. So I pulled the seat off, just unscrewed the bottom and cut a piece of fabric out. I'm going to be stapling one side, as you can see that right side there of the fabric, then I'm pulling the opposite side really tight and stapling that. Then in between those sections, I'm going to be doing two more kind of stapled section. So we're essentially creating like a plus sign of staples on the circular chair base. And even if this was a square, I would do the same thing. This just allows you to kind of even out the fabric and make it so that you're not pulling some in some sections. And then when you get to the end, you have this leftover bulk or you don't have enough fabric pulled in that area, if that makes sense. I like to even it out and then I kind of work in between those sections and it makes a really nice and tight looking upholstery on the dining chair. And then I'm going through and cutting off any extra fabric, just pretty close to where the staples were. Flipping that over, and this is what our seat is looking like. And once I put this on the base, I absolutely loved it. So I screwed it in, and that's all you have to do to reupholster the chair. It took me about two hours to reupholster all five of them.
good morning. I have not put my camera in the car mount in forever, but I'm actually going on a little trip to Nikki Kehoe. It's just down the street from my apartment, and I want to get a set of candles for the breakfast nook. They have these really cute little painted candles. I'm picking up Justin right now because this car is in the shop, actually. So, going to pick him up, then we're going to Nikki Kehoe, and the breakfast nook's going to be finished today. Like, we started working on the chairs yesterday. They look so, so, so good. I was looking at some of the footage back, and I swear, they look so large on camera, but they do not feel large in that room at all. Looks really good though. I'm absolutely loving it and I cannot wait to work on it. So yeah, let's see if we can find anything at Nikki Kiho. Hi! Oh, these are so cool. They're so cool. Wow, look at these plates Justin got that we might put on the wall. This fish plate. And then, is this like a deer? I think so. Oh yeah, it is. It's cute. It's like a little fawn, kind of. It's a lone a fox. A lost fawn. A lost fawn and a lone fox. Um, and then these really cool, he found these like round wooden frames. I was thinking that these actually could be cool on where we were going to put the tree, like in three, and we could cover oh, yeah. the outlet with one of them. Uh, I give him special things only when they work better in his house than mine. Yeah, he's like, I have actually these plates that I like, wasn't really going to like <laughs> tell you about, but like I have them and like, I mean, I wasn't going to put them in my kitchen, but I kind of think they might look good in this kitchen. So yeah. I guess I can bring them and I'm like, okay. I say for <laughs> the Lone Fox fam. <laughs> we're here. Let's see. Look at this tiled stand they made for the plant. So cool. So pretty in here. I love this serveware here. And it's really not that bad of a price. Um, I mean, Nikki Kiho is always kind of expensive, but like this piece is 65. I don't think that's too bad. And like the larger ones is like 80. You guys, I've always wondered what this little thing is for on the end of these like extension drill bits, but it's literally to hold the screw in place for you so you don't have to like hold it while it starts. I never knew that. Here you can see just three rings per napkin and this is five rings. Like it just makes it so much more structured. It just pulls up these little like drapes that fall, which is a pretty look in some occasions, but I want them to look more like this. So I'm adding on five rings per napkin, which is the perfect amount. All right, so just a little check-in. The baseboards are now all caulked and we did fill all the holes that were done from the nails. So we're just waiting for that to dry down and then we can do a little sanding, painting, but we are gonna be adding some shoe molding around the bottom edge here. Now, traditionally you either use like a shoe molding or a quarter round, but a shoe molding is just a little taller and a little skinnier. So I feel like it's a bit more of an elevated kind of elegant look as opposed to a quarter round is a little bit more rounded and the great thing about the shoe molding is you can easily cut it with a pair of miter shears if you have never seen miter shears these are my favorite for doing wall molding little trim pieces you could do an easy angled cut with these they're like scissors for wood essentially and it's going to make the process super quick and easy so we can just attach these across the bottom and finish off the edge the light to this space and the previous light I do love it I don't want to use it in this space in particular but I am going to keep it the one with the wrought iron and the roses because I just adore this particular light here 
This one I actually got from my friend Brittany at Badlands Vintage. She found this at an antique shop and sent me a photo and was like, do you want me to pick this up for you? And I was like, absolutely, please do. It was actually extremely affordable as well. I think it was like $100, believe it or not. And it's like this dark wood. It has the little rosette details that a lot of people don't love, but I'm embracing it. The house had the original details throughout, so I love adding bits like this that bring it back as well. There are acorns on the bottom, which I'll bring a close up so you guys can see, but I just think this light is so unique. It's so, so cool. How long have I had this for? Four months. Four months. I've had this like sitting in the laundry room for months. And I also got this exciting little doodad to add to the light. And this is a cord cover. And I actually found this when I went to Pearson Ward and got that pillow for the living room, the checkerboard one. They had these and I asked what they were and the guy said they're like a cord cover for lamps or for like pendant lights. Like you put this over even a cord that you plug into the wall just to make it more decorative. She's a little crooked. I feel like we can fix her once she's up. Yeah, true, I think so too. I think it needs to be a little higher than that still. Yeah. Yeah, like that's perfect. We need this. I talk about it in every video, but it's called Feed and Wax. It really is the best. Like it brings any wood. This is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form, but I just use this on everything now. Okay, watch this. Beautiful. I've never seen something more beautiful. It's so That is so pretty. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. A lot of the hard stuff is done in this breakfast nook. We have the curtains up, we have the light fixture up, the table, the chairs are reupholstered, baseboards are drying, and I wanna start adding some of the elements I've collected for the space. So I'm going to be adding this art piece to the wall. And I actually got this piece on, I got it online. I think I got it on Etsy a while back and I just loved the way that it looked. The colors in it are so pretty. I love how textured it is as well. It's one of those really kind of textural pieces. It kind of looked a little folk arty as well, which I love. And so the orange frame is really nice in this room too, the more orangey toned wood. I'm just gonna pop that on the wall right here. We lost our hammer, so we're using a mallet. Where you up in the blinds put down? I want to add a little taper holder right on the left side of the window. We have this kind of area. And I thought just something simple with the little Nikki Kehoe taper that I got today. Can you see this? It has like a really pretty painting on it. Like there's this girl that does these for them and she does paintings on the candles. And I feel like it's like its little own piece of art. So I want to just display this here in the little holder. Justin's down here doing some painting on the baseboards. Now I am actually going to be hanging some art on this wall. And the main reason I'm hanging art here is because there's an outlet like halfway up the wall, which is convenient. It's great to have this, but I also would like to cover it to where we can like pull it off, pull the artwork off and use it if needed. And then um, Justin actually had a couple of these frames and we're going to just kind of be stacking them here. And I lost my laser level, so we're gonna hang these by eye. By eye, I'm going to hang these by eye. I'm going to hang things by eye. So now I have to find artwork to go in these. Are they even even? Mm, no.
casually cut these off with a bolt cutter. Perfect. Now it'll close nice and good. Utilizing the kitchen for a bit to frame some of the art that are going in these really great frames and I'm actually going to be using this book here. I've used this so many times. I got this at a thrift store. It's a French Impressionism book and I pull art from here all the time. I have used it countless, countless times so I've definitely like, I don't know, this art isn't going to serve a purpose in this book. Might as well put it on the wall, you know? So I love big art books like this. I even have this one. It's an Italian painting book. This one doesn't have that great, um, it has actually like pictures in here and they're like added in, which is so strange. I do like the art that I find in here though. So I came across this little still life bit, which I thought was pretty. This little one with kind of some teapots on it that I felt kind of looked breakfast enough vibes. So I'm just going to reframe those. That is so cute. I love the wood on these. Yeah, maybe. I just styled up this side of the built-ins and it looks so cute. I love these and I'm normally not a huge fan of like a glass cabinet, but I think these are small and cute and they're quaint kind of in the breakfast nook. I don't know, there's something about them that I like. And in here, as you can see, I have some of my just pieces I've been collecting. So these are some great mugs. I found these at the flea market. They're from Spain, but they're so cool. They have this like bird painted on them. And then I got this Nikki Kehoe serveware piece, which I I've loved this collection that they came out with. I thought it was so pretty, so I wanted to add a piece there, and then a couple cookbooks, and then down here's the plate that Justin got, which I love it because it kind of brings a little bit of warmth into this area. And then on top, I just did kind of the simple candelabra. Found this on Facebook Marketplace, but I just loved the little legs on the bottom. The feet are so cute. And then a couple more cookbooks over here, but let's style the opposite side. This is such a small room, so it's like, it feels so strange to only be styling so minimally because in the living room I did a bunch of styling as you guys saw, but this is a pretty small room, so I am going to share what it looks like and reveal it to you guys in a couple of seconds. So let's do it. Three, two, one. breakfast nook turned out I am I love it I think it is so so cool and I definitely do think it's gonna be kind of like a growing room or like a work in progress room like I would love to swap out some of these arts for maybe pieces I find at the flea market in the future Marie and I have always loved working and kind of sitting in a breakfast nook so I feel like this is gonna be so nice to actually be able to utilize now because it's kind of just been an empty Space. So I hope that you guys loved this video and if you have not already make sure to subscribe to my channel because we are renovating this entire home
home here on the channel and also check out my Instagram it is Lone Fox Home I'm posting some pictures of this so if you want some like close up zoom in detail pictures I will definitely share those on Instagram but I'll catch you in my next one bye guys